This is our youth, act one. A cold Saturday night in March, 1982, after midnight, a small and personal pillbox studio apartment on the second or third floor of a somewhat rundown post-war building on the Upper West Side of Manhattan between Broadway and West End, lived in by Dennis Ziegler. There is a TV and stereo, a lot of records, some arbitrary furniture, a little used kitchenette, and a mattress on the floor in the corner. Scattered around the room are piles of the New York Post, sports magazines, and a lot of underground comic books. There was sports equipment in the apartment, if not actually in view. The room looks lived in, but aside from a wall of photographs from Dennis's life, no effort whatsoever has been made to decorate it. It looks like it could be packed up and cleared out in half an hour. Dennis is watching TV. He is a grungy, handsome, very athletic, formerly long-haired kid, just 21 years old, wearing baggy, chino-type pants and an ancient polo shirt. He is a very quick, dynamic, fanatical, and bullying kind of person, amazingly good-natured and magnetic, but insanely competitive, and almost always successfully so. A dark cult god of high school only recently encountering, without necessarily recognizing, the first evidence that the dazzling aggressive hipster techniques from which he has always dominated, dominated his peers might not stand him in good stead for much longer. The buzzer buzzes. Dennis is too cool to answer it right away. It buzzes again. He gets up and goes to the intercom. <clears throat> yeah. Yo, Dennis, it's me, Warren. What do you want? Yo, let me up. Dennis hits the buzzer, sits down and watches TV. There is a knock at the door. Again, he doesn't answer it right away. Another knock from off. Uh, hey. Dennis gets up and unlocks the door without opening it, then plops down again to watch TV. Warren Straub comes in the front door. He's a skinny 19-year-old, a strange barking dog of a kid who, with large tracts of thoughtfulness and his personality that are not doing him much good at the moment, probably because they so infrequently influence his actions. He has spent most of his adolescence in hot water of one kind or another, but it is just beginning to find beneath uh, his natural eccentricity, a dogged self-possession his friends may not all share, and despite his enormous self-destructiveness, he is above all things a trier. His language and wardrobe are heavily influenced by Dennis, but only up to a point, and he would be a good-looking kid if he eased up on his personal style a little. He comes into the apartment looking a very big suitcase and an overloaded heavy-duty hiking backpack. Hey. What's with the suitcase? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. Warren closes the door and puts down his stuff, sits down next to Dennis on the mattress and looks at the TV. What are you watching? Lock the door. What are you watching? Nothing. What do you want? Nothing. I don't have any pot. I don't want any. I got some. Let me see it. Warren produces a Ziploc plastic bag carefully wrapped around a small amount of dark green marijuana. Dennis opens it and smells it. This is good. Where'd you get it? From Christian. Can we smoke it? I'm saving it. For what? Dennis takes the pot out of the bag and reaches for a record album. He starts to crumble the pot onto the album cover. Just half. Shut up. Just half, man. Dennis looks at him and crumbles the rest of the pot onto the album. You got papers? You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> There's some papers on the table. Give me one. Warren does not comply. Hey! Give me a rolling paper. Do you know how much money you owe me? Warren takes out a small wad of bills, peels off a few, and drops them on the bed. Where'd you get this? What do you care? Well, if you're so rich, then you can get more pot from Christian tomorrow, so give me the fucking rolling papers before I beat the shit out of you! Warren goes to the table and throws a packet of club or zigzag rice papers to Dennis. What happened? Jasonius kicked you out? No, man, I left. You can't stay here. I don't want to stay here. Why'd he kick you out? What'd you do? Nothing. I got stoned and he comes home and he's like, this apartment smells like pot all the time. And I'm like, yeah, cause I'm always smoking it. So then he's like, I want that smell out of this house. And then he's like, no, actually I want you out of this house. Then he throws a few bills on the floor. He's like, there's some cash. Now pack up your shit and get out before I beat your fucking head in. And I was like, whatever. So he went on a date with his whore and I packed up my stuff and left. Where are you gonna stay? I don't know. Maybe I'll stay with Christian. I don't know. Maybe I'll stay in a hotel. Who the hell knows? 
How are you going to stay in a hotel? I got money. How much did he give you? He gave me some money. Why? Like to thank you for leaving? Yes. How much is this? Putting the beautifully rolled joint in his mouth, Dennis counts the money Warren threw in the bed. 200. Dennis finishes counting. From under the mattress, he pulls a beat up school composition notebook and flips through it until he finds Warren's name. Warren! Cleared with stolen funds. They're not stolen, man. He gave it to me. Dennis closes the book, finds a match, and lights up. Where did Christian get this from? I don't know. Slaps Warren in the face, playfully but hard. Don't fucking lie to me. Where'd he get it? Warren tries to hit Dennis back, but Dennis is much bigger and stronger and stops him. Don't fucking hit me. Where did he get it from? Why don't you ask him? Did he get it from Philip? No, he said he got it from some fucking Rastafarian. That guy Wally? I don't know. That guy Cresco? I don't know. I don't keep track of where you guys perform your criminal activities. Who cares? Give me that. Dennis doesn't move. He keeps smoking. Warren reaches for the joint. Dennis allows him to take it. How much money did you steal? A lot. Let me see. Warren opens his backpack and takes out a felt shoe bag stuffed with bursting, bursting with cash. He loosens the ties and shows it to Dennis. That's a lot. It's $15,000. Are you fucking crazy? Give me half. No. Give me five. I'm not giving you anything. No, give me five. We'll go to France and we'll mail the rest back to your dad with a note. Took five, went to France. I'm keeping it. Are you kidding? He'll send large men after you with guns. He doesn't even know I have it. What do you mean? Where did you get Where it? Where did he get Where did you I mean, get it from? I, it was in his room. It was in his room? Yeah. Your father keeps $15,000 cash in his room? For what, tips? I don't know. I, I guess he's got some kind of illicit lingerie deal in the works or something. I don't know. Your father is so heavy, man. Yeah, so after he threw me out and went to supper, I was just roaming the house looking for liftable objects. I thought that was going to be his attitude. So I go into his bedroom, and there's this sinister-looking briefcase just sitting on his bed. So I jimmied open the lock, and there's like rows and rows of cash just staring at me, like totally full of money. Jason. Yeah. So I'm like, Dad. And I'm like, should I take this? This is some serious money. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm making pay. So I take out the cash, and I fill the briefcase with all these old National Geographics and lock it up again. So it'll probably sit there for the weekend. And then when he goes to deposit it or bribe whoever he's planning on bribing, he'll open it up and hopefully he'll think one of his cohorts ripped him off or like his slut did. No, he won't. Why not? Of course he won't. Why not? Because he's not a moron. Yes, he is. You really think after he throws you out of the house, he's going to open his briefcase and find 20 copies of his own National Geographics where his money should be, and he's not going to know you did it? You're a fucking moron. Now get that shit out of here. I'm telling you. Take it over to Christian's house and let your father's bodyguards break his fucking legs. He doesn't have any bodyguards. That guy who drives his car is not a bodyguard? No, he's a driver. That guy shows me his, that guy like shows me his gun like every time I see him. I, yeah, because he's insane, but my father is not a criminal. He's just in business with criminals. I don't give a shit what he is. I can't believe you cart that kind of money across town and like bring it to my doorstep. No, no. I mean, you are so stupid, man. You are so incredibly stupid. He kicks you out so you steal $15,000 from him? I was pissed. Okay, get it out of here. Take it to Christian's house. It's not home. Take it to Yaffe's house. Go to Leonard's house. I don't care. Nobody's home. Everybody's parents are home. I'm not allowed in their houses. Come on. I don't want to be wandering down the streets with all that money. Come on. This is so typical of you, man. I mean, this is like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the prototype moronic move we've all come to expect from your corner. You drive the guy crazy because you're such a sniveling little obnoxious punk. You grate on the guy until he finally throws you out 
arguably the most dangerous lingerie manufacturer in the world, and then you steal his money and bring it to my house, and you expect me to, like, hide you or something? No, 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 no. That's why nobody likes you, man, because you're always provoking people. Okay, now everybody's provoked. Only you're the one they're all fucking hate. Listen to me. I'm trying to tell you something. This is good for you. Oh, yeah? No, it is. It's good for you. Listen, you're a fucking idiot. You never have any money. Nobody can stand to have you around, and you can't get laid. I mean, man, you cannot get laid. You never get laid. Like, the last girlfriend you had was in, like, ninth grade, and it lasted for two weeks, and that bitch probably still hasn't recovered. She hasn't. I freaked her out. <sighs> what kind of life do you lead? You live with your father, a psycho. He beats the shit out of you, like, on this regular basis. You habitually owe me hundreds of dollars. You never pay me till now, but we won't even discuss that. Nobody can stand to have you around because you're such an annoying, loudmouth little creep, and now you're like some kind of fugitive from justice. What is gonna happen to you, man? What's gonna happen to anybody? Who cares? Dennis shrugs. Like Dennis. you're so independent. Yeah, because my parents pay for this apartment. They don't throw me out of it because they're so grateful I don't want to live with them because I don't goad them into making me dependent. I'm just like, don't send me to college, just spring for my rent. I'll be a bike messenger till I decide what I want to do and we'll never have to deal with each other. And they're like, fine. Why do you say that shit? Because it's true. Why do you, you deserve it? Are you crying now? No. I don't know what to do. I I don't know where to go. Well, for one thing, you should give me $5,000 and then you should return that money. I'm not giving you $5,000. I'm telling you, France. You want some money? No, I don't want any money. Warren opens the bag and holds out two bricks of cash. Take some money. Go to fucking France. I don't want to go to France <laughs> like I want your father stalking me for the rest of my life. Now put that shit back in the bag and take it back to where you found it. it scares me. Warren puts the money back and closes the ties. I can't return it because he's home by now. He's asleep. That, that shit is in his bedroom and he's gonna be home all day tomorrow because he's having some associates over for brunch. Brunch. It's a wild concept. It's not breakfast and it's not lunch. It's brunch. Brunch. Let's serve brunch. It's something you serve. This is strong pot. I know. All right. You know what you should tell your father? It doesn't matter what I do. He's going to kill me anyway. So what's the difference? No, let's figure this out. It's going to be OK. I'm a total mathematical genius. Now, how much of this cash did you spend? Not much. Paid you back. I took a cab. I ate sushi. Uh, 250 bucks. But he gave me 50. OK, so don't spend any more. Hang out till Monday, and then return it on Monday when he goes to work. If the briefcase is already gone, then just like leave the cash in his bedroom with a note of explanation and like leave town. I don't know. It's a sound plan. And if he still hasn't even opened the briefcase, you're like home free, except for 200 bucks. Can I get the 200 bucks back from you? No, man, that's like paid. I can't release that cash. Where am I gonna stay? Stay with Christian. Why can't I stay here? Because I don't want you. It's just two days. I don't care. Come on. Nothing's going to happen. He's not going to know I came here. He definitely won't open the briefcase till Monday, and I'll be gone by then. You are so stupid, man. I mean, this definitely crowns your career as an idiot. Just let me stay here, for Christ's sake. I do shit for you all the time. Like what? Like when your girlfriend kicked you out, you stayed at my house for two weeks. That was your father's house. But what? This is my house! And I got in a lot of trouble for that, too. I hang out with you whenever you want. I play sports with you all the time. I buy pot from you. I take all the fucking abuse, and I'm a good fucking friend. So why can't you help me out when I'm in trouble and not such a 
and not be such a fucking asshole. Because you're always in trouble. You, you have like no sense of differentiation. It's just two days. All right, all right, shut up. Thanks. But if your father shows up here, I'm giving you up immediately. I'm sure you will, but he's not gonna. So what's up? What do you want to do? No, I don't want to do anything. Don't needle me, Warren. If you want to stay here, you can stay here, but you gotta shut up. Dennis turns on the TV and watches it wholeheartedly. Hey, where's that chick, Jessica? Denny, have you seen that chick, Jessica, recently? No, what about her? I'm into her. She's out of your league, man. I think she likes me. No, she doesn't. I think she does. Shut up. She's really cute, man. She is cute. That's why it'll never happen. Warren wanders over to the fridge. There's nothing in there. Warren opens the fridge and looks in. Get out of there, Warren! I just told you there's nothing in there. How come you never have any food in here? Dennis doesn't answer. He watches TV. Let's go play football. Dennis doesn't answer. Where's your girlfriend? We had a fight. Why? Because she's a cunt. Tell her to come over and bring that girl, Jessica. Tell her yourself. Going to the phone. Where's she at? You can't call her, we had a fight. Warren picks up Dennis's football and makes phantom passes. Let's go outside and play. Forget it. Let's call your girlfriend and tell her to call that girl, Jessica, and we'll take a few thousand bucks out of the shoe bag and rent a really nice hotel suite and get a lot of champagne and shit and have a wild party. What do you think? Warren throws Dennis the football. Dennis throws it back. Dennis knows how to throw a football. You can't spend that money. I'll spend some of it. Big deal. They toss the football back and forth. Come on, I'll get laid. It'll be good. Let's just get a couple of prostitutes. OK. You want to? We can call this Japanese place Philip goes to, and they'll send over like two incredibly beautiful and obedient oriental hostesses to entertain and delight us. Let's do it. How much will you spend? I don't know, how much is it? Like 200 a piece? I'd be into that. What do you tell your dad? Fuck my dad, I took his money. You robbed him. Warren throws a hard pass that goes wide and smashes into some breakables. Whoa, sorry. What is your problem? I lost control of the ball. Dennis gets the ball out of the smashed shelfware. Yo, Denny, Denny, toss it back. You broke my girlfriend's sculpture. Oh, really? Sorry. What is your problem? I don't know. Uh, I really broke it? Yeah. You really broke it. Warren comes over and examines the broken clay sculpture. What was it? It was two girls making out. Intense. Now it's like half of two girls. I'm really sorry, man. It was an accident. It's a piece of shit anyway. Yo, let me see it. Maybe you can glue it back together. Get away from it. Let me see. Warren tries to get a hand on the broken sculpture. Dennis roughly blocks him out with his body and elbows. Go sit in the corner, Warren. You're a fucking menace. Look what you did. Let me repair it. Dennis can't do anything with it. He lets Warren look at it. No problem. You just get some crazy glue and glue it together. Do you have any? No, I don't have any crazy glue. I can fix this. Dennis wanders away from the shelves. I'm wasted. Look, see. He has propped the two halves of the broken sculpture together so it looks whole. Just glue it like that and it'll be fine. You probably won't even need a clamp. Warren picks up the football and makes phantom passes to Dennis. Yo, heads up. Yo, Denny, go out. Would you put that down? Go long. The fuck am I gonna go long? Y yo, go out. Warren throws the football hard, a little out of Dennis's reach, and it smashes into a bunch of other stuff. What is with you, Warren? Oh, come on, you had it. Dennis grabs the football, rears back, and wings a viciously hard pass at Warren's head. Warren ducks, and the football smashes into the sculpture again, totally demolishing it. Catch it, you moron! Don't duck! This is my house! You tried to kill me, man. What is the matter with you? I didn't do anything. Dennis stalks Warren, grabs him in a headlock, and flings him down on the floor. They are both half laughing. Get out of my house! Come on, man. I didn't do anything. Dennis rains open-handed blows down on Warren's head and body. Warren covers up. Dennis drops onto his gut knee first. Warren groans in pain. Dennis gets up and looks at the wreckage. 
Look what you did. Oh, my stomach. Oh, forget this. He starts tossing the piece of the sculpture, basketball style, into the waste paper basket across the room. He's a good shot. Most of them go in. She's gonna freak out. The last piece goes into the waste paper basket. Dennis walks over to it and boots it into the wall. He goes to Warren, who's covering his head. You all right? Warren uncovers his head. Dennis slaps him in the face. Cut it out. Thanks for breaking her shit. You murdered my stomach. I'm restless. So you don't want to call any Japanese hostesses? You couldn't handle it. You'd go limp and be depressed about it for like a year and a half. Let's call them. Shut up. It's $200 a piece. You want to spend that cash? No, man, I can't. What are you going to do about the 200 bucks? I don't know. I'll, I'll sell something. Well, from like your little faggot memorabilia collection? Yeah. So why don't you ever sell any of that shit to pay me? You should let me call Adam Salk's brother, man. He makes a fortune buying and selling that shit. I pay you. You do not. Besides, paying you isn't like life and death. Anyway, you make so much money off all of us already. It's like completely ridiculous. Yeah, and I always smoke pot with you, all of you, my pot, all the time, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth. So why shouldn't I make some money off of you? You fucking guys like gripe at me all the time. And I'm providing you schmucks with such a crucial service. Plus, I'm developing valuable entrepreneurial skills for my future. Plus, I'm like providing you with precious memories of your youth for when you're fucking old. I'm like the basis of half your personality. All you do is imitate me. I turned you on to the Honeymooners, Frank Zappa, Ernest Lubitsch, boxer shorts, sushi. I'm like a one-man youth culture for you pathetic assholes. You're going to remember your youth is like a gray stone haze punctuated by a series of beatings from your dad and like my jokes. God damn, you know how much pot I've thrown out the window for you guys in the middle of the night when you're wandering around the street like junkies looking for half a joint so you can go to sleep because you've scraped all the resin out of your pipes? You bitch about the fact that along the way I turn a little profit. Should thank God you ever met me, you little fucking hero-worshipping little fag. You are out of your mind, man. <sighs> Warren opens his big suitcase and starts removing the first items in an extensive collection of toys and memorabilia from the 1950s and 60s. Mint condition, mid-60s, Mattel toys, first release albums, a 1950s toaster, etc. Don't take that stuff out in here. Why not? I want to see what I can sell. No, no, don't take that stuff out of my apartment. It depresses me. Why? Don't take all that cutesy, kitschy, retro 60s bullshit out in my apartment. I don't want to look at it. I can get a couple hundred bucks for any of these albums. Let me see. Warren Hanson, an obscure early Frank Zappa album. Where'd you get this? I'm from this buddy of mine in Seattle. This is an amazing album. Dennis looks through some of this stuff. What is this shit? What's with the little spaceman? You are weird, man. This is Major Matt Ma Mason. Don't you remember this? No. They had these when we were little. They're really cool. I and mean, these are in really good condition. I could get like 150, 200 bucks for this. Seriously? Yeah. So how do you always owe me money? Because I don't want to sell them. You are a depressing little man. Now put that shit away. Holding it out to him. Look, he's got a little space helmet. The visor moves up and down. Get that shit away from me. The phone rings. Dennis answers on the second ring. Yeah. Because you're being a cunt! The line goes dead. Dennis hangs up and laughs, suddenly energized. <sighs> you're intense, man. I'm the best! I don't let people freak me out. I freak them out. You're an amazing man. Hey, listen. That, that girl you like, what's her name? Jessica. She's friends with the other girl, Natalie. You know her? Yeah. Okay, check it out. That girl, Natalie, likes me, okay? Last summer when Valerie was in Sweden with her family, I was like making out with her all the time, but that's all she ever let me do. 
but I saw her last week and she was coming on to me all over the place. So look, new plan. We'll take a thousand bucks out of the shoe bag, cab it over to Philip's house, pick up an ounce of blow, call Natalie, tell her and Jessica to come over here. We'll get them wired. I'll fuck Natalie. You do your best to fuck Jessica. Then tomorrow we make a few calls, sell the rest of the blow, turn a tidy little profit and return the whole 15 grand to your psychotic father intact on Monday. That's a great plan. How do you figure? Because we extract a quarter ounce for ourselves, throw back in a quarter ounce of cut, sell it for like 125 a gram, clear around 3,600 bucks, return the thousand dollar investment to the bag along with the 200 you already owe him, and you're still gonna end up making like $600. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But like, what's the basic margin of profit? Like 1,800 each. So, but if we're making 1,800 each, how come I only end up with six? You don't end up with six. You end up with 18 minus the thousand you're investing and the 200 you already owe, plus a free eighth of blow, which you can snort or sell as you see fit, get it? Not really, but whatever. What don't you get? I don't really get the whole thing. Dennis hangs up the phone. Look. We're buying a Z for a thousand dollars. Well, I get that part. I just, I mean, theoretically, we're making a joint investment, right? Yeah. Only in terms of the actual cash outlay, it's all coming from my area, right? So in a way, I'm the only actual investor. Yeah. So then why aren't I making all the money? Because it's my connect and my customers and I'm gonna have that shit in my house. Yeah, but- What do you mean, why aren't you making all the money? I'm not saying I should, but you're saying we should split the profits before I put back thousand dollars. And I'm saying like, why aren't we doing it afterwards? Because it's my connect, I'm providing the connect. I'm providing the cash. So what? So I figure the odds be 50-50. You do, huh? All right, whatever. But that's fucked up because I'm doing all the work and all you did was steal some money from your father, which you're getting back in like 10 minutes. All right, so what do you want to do? I don't know, I just, I should definitely get some kind of service fee. So look, we'll split the 2,600 net, 1,300 each, and then you pay me 200 more for doing all the work that leaves me with 15 and you with 1100 out of which you can pay your father back the $200 or not, whatever you want, okay? I guess. Is that all right with you? Can I call him now? Yeah, call him up. Don't ever try to out-Jew me, little man. I'm twice the Jew you'll ever be. I'm like a Jewish god. I'm like Julius Caesar. You're a fucking mental case, man. Way to take care of business, little Warren. Dennis pinches Warren very hard. Ow! Dennis dials the phone, waits. He's not there. Billy, Dennis, call me. I'm looking for some fun. Shit. The phone rings. He lets it ring twice, then picks up. Into the phone. Yeah? No. Because I don't know. Because I don't give a shit! Yeah. Yeah, okay. Go in the bathroom. Come on. Go in the bathroom! Warren goes in the bathroom, into the phone. I'm sorry, baby, I know I messed up. I know, as soon as I start arguing, I immediately snap into attack mode and just become as insanely brutal as I possibly can. It's because of my fucking mother. All right, why don't you come over? Warren's here, but I'll get rid of him. Yeah? Oh, really? No, totally bring her. Warren's like in love with her. Would she be into that? What if we got some blow? She might. All right. See if she'll come over. I'll work on it. Hey! Uh, what's up? Nothing. I got good news for you. So get your little boner ready because my girlfriend's on her way over with your favorite teenage prostitute. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? She with Jessica? Yeah. 
They're coming over here? That's right, my little love machine. Excellent. Only I told him we'd get drugs, so shut up for a second and let me think. Who are you calling? Stewie, hey, what are you doing? You are too much, man. You should have been like a Roman senator. Let me ask you something. Have you seen this weed Christian's been selling? It's like an olive colored, dark green, heavy sense with like a medium amount of fuzz, very wet and sticky and like long oblong shaped little bud shaped like beef satay. Now you got some. Do you know where he got it? All right, let me ask you something else. Do you know where Philip is? Yeah, have you seen it? How is it? Really? How much did you get? What's he asking? I did, he's not home. No, I just tried him, you fat fucking pig. He's not home. Why do you have to aggravate me all the time? What's up? So listen, Stewie, baby, if I can't get a hold of Philip in like 20, I'm coming over there and taking an eighth off of you, all right? No, Stuart, I'm not buying it from you. I'm taking it at cost. I'll give you cash up front, whatever you paid Philip, and you can get more from him tomorrow. Yeah, as a favor. Because I'm asking you to, that's why, because I introduced you to him in the first place, you fucking globulous fuck. You wouldn't even know him if it wasn't for me. You'd still be dealing commercial pot outside some Long Island mall to a bunch of dyed blonde, great neck bimbets, you fat fucking asshole. I created you, Stewie, and I can destroy you just as easily. I don't care how many syphilis-ridden Dutch backpackers are blowing you, man. Why do you always have to, like, try to have some mincing little bullshit advantage over me all the time? So you don't feel like such a fat, ugly man or something? No, man, because you're, like, totally uncivilized. You have, like, no sense of protocol, like, whatsoever. All right, all right. I'll call you back. What's up? Nothing. He's sitting on his waterbed doing speed balls with some naked Dutch hitchhiker he picked up at the bus stop, and he wants to, like, dicker with me over the price of an eighth of coke. Like, I can't go over to Phillips myself tomorrow and pick it up for less than what he paid, and, like, I haven't turned him on to tons of business and, and tons of my own customers just so he could be holding some kind of cards on me or something. Plus, he's so stoned out of his mind to begin with, he can't understand a word like he's saying anyway. So... What are we gonna do? I don't know. See if Philip calls back, and if he doesn't, we'll just have to deal with a fat man. Maybe we should just forget it. It's late anyway. I don't wanna be lying in bed grinding my teeth all night. Unless you wanna just stay up and watch HR puffin' stuff at 5.30 in the morning. I can't watch that show, man. It freaks me out. All right. Should we get heroin? Not too much, right? Uh, let's do speedballs. Shut up. Do you even know what a speedball is? No. Yeah, I know what a speedball is. It's like half heroin, half cocaine, right? Yeah, but, but we can't give these girls speedballs. What are you, a maniac? Anyway, Valerie won't do heroin. You won't do heroin, so what are you talking about? I've done it. Yeah, once. You'd be throwing up all night. That'd make a good impression. Speedballs are sick, man. They get you so fucked up, you're like really sorry. Let's do it. Shut up. What's up? No, nothing's up. How can you sit in a room with somebody for hours with nothing going on and keep asking what's up every 10 minutes like something new happened all of a sudden that you didn't know about? I don't know. It's just an expression. Warren is walking around the room, picking things up and looking at them. Where are they? They're coming. Take it easy and get away from my shit. Warren keeps looking through Dennis's stuff. But do they know I'm here? Yeah, yeah, I told him you're here. I totally set it up for you. And just don't get weird and bizarre and start talking about your dead sister. You'll do fine. I'm not going to talk about anything. Yeah, just don't be like... You're really harsh, man. I'm harsh. Yeah. Why? You should face that shit. I face it all the time. Well, why do you have, like, her childhood pictures up all over your room, man? Like, articles about her murder in your fucking drawer, like, ten years after the fact? You're gonna let that shit dominate your life? You gotta, like, get on with it. I'm getting on with it, man. That's why I have her picture up. So I could get on with it. She's fucking lucky she's dead anyway. She is not. Shut up. Dennis gets up and goes to his stereo and puts on a record. It's a slow song. 
like any way the wind blows from Reuben and the Jets. He holds out his arms and walks towards Warren, singing along to him loudly. No. Get away from me. Dennis keeps coming, looming over Warren, who tries to escape. Get away from me, man. Dennis falls on top of him, crushing him with his body, still singing. Get off me, man. Dennis laughs, screams. Warren struggles to get out from under him. Dennis gives him a loud, wet kiss on the cheek and sits back. Warren pushes him over and sits up. Dennis flops onto his back. Warren walks around. I love Warren, man. He plays with me all day and all night for as long as I want, and he never complains. He sits up, grabs the phone, and dials. Stewie, it's me. I'm coming over. What are you telling me? Okay, forget it! What's up? He'll only sell us an ounce for 1500 if you give him the cash up front. So I'm not doing that. I don't buy retail. But you can if you want. But I'm not paying this pork loin 1500 bucks for an ounce of blow. It's not worth my while. So let's... Unless we just keep an eight for ourselves instead of a quarter. That way you can still make your 1100 and I make my 15. We just keep less blow for ourselves. Hold on a second! So what do you want to do? I'd go for it. All right, I'm coming over. Get dressed. He hangs up and starts looking for his sneakers. So should we get some champagne or something? All right, but I'm not paying for that either. Nobody's asking you to. What do you want, like Dom Perignon? There is no other brand. How many should I get? One bottle, two? Let's get two. They're expensive. That's no problem. All right. So how much do you need? Give me 1500 for the blow and like 200 for the champagne. Champagne's not going to cost $200. Just give me enough to cover it. Or let's just forget the whole thing. I, I don't want to do any coke. It's a terrible drug. It's for chumps. It sucks. I'll fuck my girlfriend and go to sleep and you can go sleep in the park. Warren goes to the shoe bag and starts counting up the money. Dennis starts putting on his sneakers. So, but should I come with you or what's the deal? No, you got to let Valerie in. She threw her key down the trash chute. No, man, I don't want to deal with your girlfriend. It's all right. We made up. Just stay here. I won't be long. Whatever. Dennis finishes tying his sneakers and looks at him. Warren looks more nervous with every passing second. See, this is no good. You're already, like, freaked out and nervous. Forget it. That girl's going to smell it the minute she comes in. What is the matter with you? What do you mean? What are you, like, worried about what to say? Don't say anything. Just sit there and look handsome, you Greek god. She or she should be worried about you. You're a handsome guy. You're like an intelligent, fucking interesting guy. You don't have to do anything. Just don't get freaked out. We're going to break this stupefying losing streak of yours wide open. Now give me the money. All right. This is 1700 Mocking his grave tone. All right. Dennis takes the money and shuffles into his coat. So just let him up and I'll be back in like 20. Cool. Be glad, man. She's really cute. She's got a great body and maybe you can actually fuck her. I gotta give her the old college try. Dennis goes out. Warren locks the door after him, steps back into the room alone. He looks at himself in the mirror. He tries to make his appearance more casual, but it's a challenge. He untucks his shirt, muscles his hair, etc. He finds the half-smoked joint, lights it, and takes one huge hit. He sits there without moving. The buzzer buzzes. He gets up, pressing the intercom button. Hello? It's Jessica. Okay. Warren buzzes her in and moves away from the intercom. He checks his appearance one more time, then goes to the door and waits. There's a knock on the door. He waits for a second knock, then opens the door and steps back. You may enter. Enter Jessica Goldman. She is the same age as Warren, around 19. She wears effective makeup, big shoes, and a slightly pricey little dress that shows off her figure to good advantage. She is dressed up for the night, not down, and definitely looks a little out of place in Dennis's grunge palace. She's a very nervous girl whose self-taught method of coping with her nervousness consists of seeking out the nearest available oasis of self-assurance and entrenching herself there with a watchful defensiveness that sweeps away anything that might threaten to dislodge her, including her own chance at happiness and the opportunity of gaining a wider perspective on the world that might eventually make her less nervous to begin with. Despite her prickliness, she is basically friendly, definitely interested in Warren, and trying to make a good impression. Hi, Warren. How are you? I'm okay. 
He hesitates, then leans in to kiss her hello on the cheek. She is not expecting this, so it's a little physically embarrassing. Um, where's Valerie? She went with Dennis. We ran into him downstairs, and they said I should just come up. She stands there, not sure where to go or what's appropriate. So, how are you doing, Jessica? You're looking very automated tonight. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Um, I think it's just a fashion concept. What? Um, nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, you want to come in? He steps into the room. So how long do you think they're going to be? I don't know, maybe half an hour? What? What do you mean? Where do they have to go? Like the East 50s. Well, okay. <laughs> I don't mean to be paranoid. I just, I don't want to be the victim of some teenage matchmaking scheme. Noted. You know, like if I'm going to get set up, I'm going to do it myself. Well, nobody's setting you up, so why don't you calm down? Oh, you can't see why I would think that? I don't know or care what you think, Jessica. I'm just staying here because my dad threw me out of the house, but go home. It's fine with me. Okay, sorry. You probably think I'm like a total bitch now, right? I don't think anything. I didn't even know what you're talking about. He locks the door. And now you're mine. No way. I'm kidding. Calm down. No, that's not funny at all. Noted. Sits down and takes out her cigarettes and lighter. Is it okay if I smoke in here? Go ahead. It's on my house. Well, is there like an ashtray or something I can use? Sure, there's one somewhere. He looks for an ashtray and finds one at the same time she finds an empty soda can. Here you go. No, 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 it's okay. I can use this. Think so. Warren puts down the ashtray and sits down across the room from her. She smokes. <sighs> so, are you like a really big cigarette smoker? I guess so. How many cigarettes would you say you smoke on an average day? I don't know, like a pack and a half a day on like a really heavy smoking day, maybe like a half a pack a day if I'm like in the country. Yeah. I never really got into the whole cigarette scene myself, but I hear great things about it. Well, but if you smoke pot all the time, it's much worse on your lungs than cigarettes. I guess my lungs are pretty severely damaged. I'm sure they are. So did those guys go to get uh, the Coke? Uh, that's the plan. I don't want to do very much. Well, we're getting like a lot. Well, I'll do some. Uh, and we're getting some Dom Perignon to top it off. So it should be pretty good. Sounds good. <laughs> so why'd your dad throw you out of the house? What did you do? Uh, we just had a slight polite dispute. It's no big deal. Are you staying here? Where are you going to sleep? I don't know. It wasn't like a really detailed plan. I was just planning to crash on the floor for a few days so I figure out what I'm doing. What are you going to do? I don't know. I was thinking I might just buy a bus ticket and head out west. I have a buddy who lives in Seattle, so I might just do that. I definitely want to get out of this pit, that's for sure. You mean New York? You don't like living here? What's it like? You go outside and it smells bad. You know, and, and I live in Central Park West. Well. I like the outdoors. Yeah, I know, but. Like last winter, I went to visit this buddy of mine who lives in Jackson Hole in Wyoming. Uh, we just like ski every day, you know, and bus tables at night. And when you get up in the morning and open the front door, it's like silent, you know? You go outside and it's like mountains and snow and nobody around for miles and, and like the whole sky over your head, you know? So what the fuck am I doing languishing on this trash heap for? The, the intellectual stimulation? I'm not getting any. All I do is smoke pot. I can do that anywhere. I can just bring that with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really take advantage of the city's facilities either, and it just seems like such a total waste. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, you're not planning on going to school at all? Didn't you go to school somewhere or something? Um, briefly. So? I, it, it just wasn't happening. Where were you? Ohio. Where, Oberlin? Well, whatever. You're at FIT, right? 
Yeah, yeah, I really like it there. It's a little jappy for me, but there's a lot of really great people there if you know where to look for them. But it's kind of weird because I'm living at home, which is great. Like my mom and I get along incredibly well. But a lot of my formerly closest friends are out of the city now. And sometimes I wonder, you know, if I should have, I don't know. So are you heavily into fashion development? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a lot of designing. I've always done it. It's what I want to do. Well, my basic philosophy about clothes is that they should be comfortable and not look like too many people had to slave over their creation. But then again, I, I'm not very fashion oriented. Yeah, but you know, you will be someday. I doubt it. Yeah, but you will. Your whole personality will be different. You think? Yeah, sure. What you're like now has nothing to do with what you're gonna be like. Like right now you're all the, like, this rich little pot smoking burnout rebel, but 10 years from now you're gonna be like, a plastic surgeon reminiscing about how wild you used to be? Well, I don't want to make any rash predictions at this point, but I seriously doubt I'm going to be going in for plastic surgery. Well, yeah, okay, whatever. But like, you'll definitely be a completely different person. Everything you think will be different and the way you act and all your most passionately held beliefs are all going to be completely different. And it's really depressing. How do you figure? because it just basically invalidates whoever you are right now. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes your whole self at any given point in your life seem so completely dismissible. So it's like, what is the point? I don't really know about that. Well, it's true. Maybe so, but I don't really agree with it. Well, I've thought about this a lot. So have I. I mean, look at who our president is now, if you don't believe me. I'm not sure I follow you, but I guess. No, like the classic example is all those kids from the 60s who were so righteous about changing the face of civilization. And then the minute they got older, they were all like, actually, you know what, maybe I'll just be a lawyer. I guess that's one interpretation. No, but it's totally true. And now like Ronald Reagan is the president of the United States. I mean, how embarrassing is that? It's pretty embarrassing. Although I have to say, I definitely know some people who are still seriously into civic activities. Like my mother does a fair amount of volunteer work for uh, some kind of great picking civil liberties organization in California. Yeah, I know people who do that too. But I'm not talking about the last pathetic remnants of Upper West Side Jewish liberalism. I'm talking about the mainstream. And it's such a joke. I mean, I definitely feel that evil is like triumphed in our time. So do I, but I still don't know if I would really ascribe to all that theory that people's personalities undergo some kind of fundamental alteration when they get older. Well, they do. Yeah. And it's a big factor. I mean, they obviously do to a degree. Yeah. And things <laughs> definitely happen to alter your general trajectory. Yeah, and no matter... But I think that you basically get a set of characteristics and then they pretty much just develop in different ways, like... Yeah, but can, I, can uh, I... Like the last year of high school, I suddenly realized that all these weird kids I grew up with were like well on the way to becoming really weird adults. And it was pretty scary, you know? Like you see a crazy kid and you realize he's never gonna grow out of it. He's a fucked up crazy kid and he's just gonna be fucked up crazy adult, like a ruined life. Are you done now? I'm done with that thought. Well, can I please say something? Go ahead. Thank you. I'm not saying anything about whether you're quote unquote fucked up or not. I don't mean it as a moral issue. Neither do I. I just think- I th think that personality components are like protons and electrons, like in science. Every molecule is made up of the same basic components. Like the difference between a hydrogen molecule and a calcium molecule is like a one proton or something. Yeah, yeah, that's wrong, but yeah. So my theory is that people's personalities are basically constructed the same way. None of them are actually the same, but they're all made of the same thing. That's interesting. Thank you. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with what I was talking about. Uh, that is unfortunate. I'm not talking about the chemical structure of your brain. I'm talking about, it's like when you find an old letter you wrote that you don't remember writing and it's got all these thoughts and opinions in it that you don't remember having and it's written to somebody you don't even remember having ever written a letter to. 
I've never found a letter like that. Well, I have like a lot of them. And it just makes you realize that there's just these huge swaths of time in your life that didn't register at all. And that you might as well just have been, you know, dead during them for all the difference they make to you now. That seems like a fairly nihilistic viewpoint, Jessica. Well, I am so completely the opposite of nihilistic. It's amazing that anyone would even, you know, say that about me. Well. But we don't agree, so that's okay. You think what you think, and I think what I think, and there's no way we're ever going to convince each other. So my suggestion is we just drop it. All right. Hey, is there anything to drink in here? I've got this really bad taste in my mouth. Uh, I think there's some water. I can get it. Uh, that's all right. Chivalry is not dead. It just smells funny. Jessica does not know how to respond to this, so she just looks at him. He gives up and goes to the fridge, finds a juice jar full of cold water, pours some in a glass, and brings it to her. Thanks a lot. She takes the glass and drinks down the whole glass while Warren watches her. God, I was so thirsty. Warren sits down, this time right next to her on the bed. He is sitting next to her, but not looking at her. It's making them both very nervous. Long silence. Jessica gets up and goes to the wall of photographs. So who are all these photos of? Are you on this wall? Yeah, I'm represented. He follows her to the wall. She finds a photo with him in it. Wow, is this you? Yep. God, what a little stoner. He looks so different with long hair. Yeah, everybody definitely went for the traditional post-high school chop. Valerie says you just cut your hair when Dennis cut his hair. Well, you definitely look better with it short. That seems to be the general consensus. But it makes me want to, like, instantly have long hair. Jessica scans the photographs. <gasps> wow, what a great picture of Dennis. I mean, he definitely has a slight cleanliness problem, but if he did it, he'd be seriously gorgeous. You think? Oh my god, are you kidding? I guess. So his dad's like a really famous painter, right? I guess he's pretty famous. Wow. So is that like really hard for Dennis to deal with? I have no idea. And his father's like really sick or something. Um, uh, he's definitely having some pretty dire prostate problems. His mom is beautiful. It's an incredibly attractive family. What does she do? She's like a big city social worker, administrator of some kind. She's always like installing swimming pools for the poor or something. What? Uh, nothing. She runs these programs for the city government or something. She designs social work programs for street kids and drug addicts and stuff like that. She's a fucking psycho. Why do you say that? Just because she's a social worker? No, because of her behavior. Why? What does she do? I don't know. She's just really strident. She's like a bleeding heart dominatrix with like a hairdo. Bleeding heart? I don't know. Yeah. What? Are you like a big Republican or something? Not at all. I'm a total Democrat. Yeah, I so just, why do you say that about her? Because that's what she's like. But I really don't care. Maybe she's really nice. I don't really want to get into an argument about it. No, no. It's just my sister's a social worker and I really... I don't I didn't say anything about your sister. No, I know you. I did. I know you didn't. I, I just didn't thought know you had a sister. No, I. I know, but I just really think it's like a. And I was not life. attempting I, to vilify the entire social worker community. Okay. okay, I know. I just admire people who dedicate themselves like that, and I. <laughs> so do I. What is she, what she does is fine. It's just how she is. I, I think it's totally brave to do that kind of work, unless you're just. Unless what? Unless you just have no sense of people. No, like, if your mission overrides your actual moral opinion, but uh, forget it, it's not, it doesn't matter. All right, I certainly didn't mean to offend you. I'm not offended. A moment. Jessica looks at the stuff in Warren's open suitcase. Hey, what's this stuff? This is just some of my belongings. What are these? It's just some fucking shit. Wait, what are these? Like, antique toys or something? Um, for the most part. These are really cool. You think? Yeah, they remind me of the stuff my cousins had when I was a little kid. I always wanted to play with their toys and they were like, go play with dolls, you little bitch. And I was like, fuck you. I love old toys. I have a fair amount of this kind of thing. Do you know how many toys I had? I mean, how much of this stuff I had when I was little, I wish I had now. Like I think of some of those toys and I just look back on them with this 
longing, you know? Definitely. She takes out the Major Matt Masons. Who are these guys? That's my Major Matt Mason collection. You know Major Matt Mason? Come on, Major Matt Mason when we were kids? Oh, he's the best. Check him out. He's like ready for his mission. <laughs> I have a complete set, all in prime condition. I could actually sell them for a lot of money, but I'm hanging on to them. Really cool. He shows her his heavy-duty 1950s toaster. And this is my amazing toaster. Toaster amazing, I call it. Look at this. It's really something. Yeah, GE made only like a few hundred of this model, like in the 50s, and then they recalled them because they were exploding in people's kitchens at breakfast and burning down their homes. <laughs> only a few hundred actually exist. I got one from this dealer I know in Colorado. He had no idea what he was selling me. Huh. I have made toast with it, but nothing bad happened to me. But I don't really use it too much because it really depreciates in value. But it's great to know I have one of the only ones in existence. What's the, your favorite thing in this whole collection? Uh, definitely my Wrigley Field opening day baseball cap my grandfather gave me. No contest. What's that? Taking out an ancient blue and white baseball cap. This is a real collector's item, like an amazing collector's item, actually. My mom's dad got it the first day at Wrigley Field when he was totally like a little kid in 1914. Wrigley Field, home of the Chicago Cubs opening day. Reads off the other side. True value. True value hardware, all right. She puts the hat on. Looks good, Jessica. I didn't know your family was from Chicago. Uh, they're not, just my grandfather. He was actually really cool. When he was a young man, he was like a fairly well-known aviator, you know, with like the fur-lined leather cap with the ear flaps and the whole bit. He actually uh, set a couple of early endurance records in the 1920s. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was pretty interesting. <laughs> like whenever he would meet one of my friends, I'd be like, Grandpa, this is my friend Neil. And my grandpa would be like, nice to meet you, Neil. Are you Jewish? And my friend Neil would be like, um, yeah. And, and my grandpa would be like, Neil, in the year 1923, I was the greatest Jewish aviator in this country. That's because I was the only Jewish aviator in this country. You want to see a picture? And then he would break out his clippings, which had all these photos of himself his fucking sop with camel that he carried with him all the time. He was pretty amusing. Is he still alive? Nah, yeah. Where does your mom live? In Santa Barbara. God, so why don't you go stay with her? That's supposed to be pretty nice. I don't particularly want to live in California, for one thing. Why not? Because of the people in it. Plus, my mom, mom lives with a boyfriend and Anyway, she's kind of freaked out generally, so it's kind of tough to be around her for very long one for very long at one stretch. Did you didn't you have a sister that died or something? Um Yeah, I did. So, I mean, is that why you say your mom like your mom freaked out? I would say it was definitely a prominent factor. What did your sister die of? Um, she was murdered. Oh my God, is that true? No, oh, it's just a little joke we have about it in the family. What? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean, is that true? I, I just, I, you know, oh my God. Yeah. I, how did it happen? I'm sorry, do you mind talking about it? Not really. Uh, do you want any pot? He picks up the roach. No, no, no thanks, but you go ahead. Um, that's all right. He puts down the roach. So what happened? Th that is so horrible. Um, nothing. She was living with this guy named Julian and my parents were kind of freaked out that she was living with this guy because she was only 19 and he was much older. Um, it's not really my favorite topic. I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. She's very that's embarrassed. Fine. He holds out the roach to her. Do you want any of this? Okay. He lights the roach and gives it to her. She takes a hit, doesn't get much, or coughs, but doesn't relight it or try again. The wild city. 
She looks at him thoughtfully for a moment. Are those your records? Um, yeah, these are my authentic first release six, 60s albums, all in perfect condition. Got the whole thing here. Uh, Early Mothers, Captain Beefheart, Herman's Hermits, everything. You want to hear one? Sure. She puts on a high velocity Frank Zappa song like Mystery Roach from Zoo Motels. All right. She nods and starts dancing. Wake this dump up. All right. Warren starts dancing in his own separate space. He takes a few tentative steps toward her, then she moves unambiguously to him, and they start dancing more or less together. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> she opens her arms and Warren steps into them. The music abruptly ends with a Zappa-esque confusion of sound and becomes something weird and impossible to dance to. Um, I don't know. I guess you can't really dance to this next song too well. Well. Oh, hold on. He hurries to the stereo and puts on a slow romantic song. Oh, okay. It goes for the slow song. I get it. Of course. Okay, I'm game. She starts to take his hands. Wait. She lets go. I've got a hair in my mouth. She extracts the hair from her mouth, shakes it off her finger, and puts her hands back up. A dance, not entirely gracelessly. I'm definitely into actual dancing. Yeah, I think your generation definitely missed out on the dancing department. Yeah, I guess, like, whoever the genius was who decided you didn't need steps should have come up with something else instead. Yeah, right? He dips her. Check him out, Mr. Dip. He brings her back up again. You could be a really good dancer. Thanks. Or so could you. If only society would give us a chance. Yeah, man. They dance. Listen. Yeah? I just gotta say, I find you incredibly attractive. Okay. <laughs> Relax, will you? Listen, would you be mortally offended if I kissed you for just a second? Well, I mean, what's the rush? Uh, no rush. I'd just like to get rid of this non in my stomach. Oh. Sure. I mean, whatever is expedient. He moves closer. No, it's just... Yeah? Warren kisses her. She kisses back. It quickly turns into heavy teenage-style making out. Jessica breaks away. <sighs> They're gonna walk in, and I'm gonna be really embarrassed. Yeah, me too. She takes a few steps away and looks back at him sharply. They are coming back, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm just checking. But I mean, do you like me, Warren, or what? Of course I do. Can't you tell? I don't know. Not really. Maybe you just want to mess around or something. Um, I do, and I like you. And I completely enjoy talking to you. Well, okay. Which would you prefer if you had to choose? That would depend on which one we'd already been doing more of. All right, never mind. Stupid question. I'm sorry. It's just, I'm always getting drawn into these situations and then getting hurt really badly, so. Noted. You want to close your eyes for a second? Yes. He closes his eyes. Jessica crosses to him and kisses him until they are both sprawled inelegantly on Dennis's horrible mattress, feeling each other up and getting so worked up that Jessica pulls away again, not out of coquetry, but just to put on the brakes. Okay, I gotta take a break. Well, I mean, if you want to, we could go someplace else. What do you mean? Like, to your house or something? Um, not my house. Wouldn't work out too well right now. Well, we can't go to my house. Well, look, why don't we... Why don't we just go rent the penthouse suite at the plaza? Like, hang out and order room service and, like, watch the sun come up over the park? How could we do that? <laughs> I happen to be extremely liquid at the moment. Are you serious? Yeah. Well... What about Dennis and Valerie? I'll leave them a note, or we can just tell them where we are and have them meet us there. We can just hang out by ourselves, whatever we feel like doing. Um, all right. Really? Sure, I mean, yeah. All right, let me just get some funding. He goes to the shoe bag and takes out a couple of bricks of cash. Oh my God, is that money in there? 
I'm afraid so. Where did you get that? These are the proceeds of my unha from my unhappy childhood. The what? I'll tell you about it later. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Brings her purse over her shoulder, stops. Shit, I should have called my mother. Before? I'm just supposed to call her if I'm gonna be out after 12.30. Doesn't that wake her? No, she doesn't care, she just goes back to sleep. You wanna call her now? No, she's just gonna freak out because I didn't call earlier. I don't know, I'll just deal with it later. As they head for the door. I don't know why the fuck she's always so worried about me. Warren shrugs, they go out. Act two, the next day, a little afternoon. On the little table is a small laboratory scale, a brown paper bag, an unopened jar of mannitol, a tablespoon, an upside down porcelain dinner plate, a nearly unfurled $10 bill, and a straight edged razor. Dennis is sprawled out asleep on his mattress in a crazy tangle of sheets wearing only a t-shirt and a pair of boxer shorts. The buzzer buzzes, Dennis stirs but does not wake. The buzzer buzzes again, he sits up, then staggers to the intercom and presses the talk button. What? It's Warren. Dennis buzzes him in, unlocks the door and leaves it ajar, then collapses back onto the bed. Warren comes in looking chipper. He carries a small deli bag with a coffee in it. Hey. Where have you been? What happened to you? Uh, nothing. I was with Jessica. You were with her this whole time? Pretty much. What time is it? Around noon. Dennis goes into the bathroom, leaving the door open. We hear him pee and flush the toilet. He comes out. Did you get that uh, Z from Stewie? Yeah, it's great. Me and Valerie were doing lines with him and Birgitta for like two and a half hours. Plus he says the heroin he has is like really amazing too. Who's Birgitta? The Dutch girl? Yeah, she was pretty cute. I don't understand how this guy gets girls, man. He is like a classically ugly man. He collapses on the bed again. Where's Valerie? Uh, Valerie. Valerie walked in here and took one look at the shards of her sculpture lying in the garbage and went completely insane. She was screaming at me so loud it literally hurt my ears. She was like, you're totally selfish, you do whatever you want, you never apologize to anyone, you have no idea how to deal with people and you're gonna die alone. And she burst into tears and fled to her aunt's house in Connecticut. I totally blame you. Sorry about that, man. I don't give a shit, she's out of her mind. So is this it? Yeah. Picks up a brown paper bag off the table and very carefully takes out of it a double wrapped Ziploc baggie containing an ounce of cocaine. That's a lot of blow. Yeah, now put it down before you break it. Warren puts down the bag of cocaine. So what happened with you and that girl? Nothing, I had a nice time. Did you fuck her? Um. Yeah, I did. You did? As in actual penetration? Basically. No, what do you mean basically? Did you or didn't you? No, I did. So that's amazing. I'm pretty pleased. Warren breaks the losing streak. Yeah, I, I kind of like her. She really likes to argue, but I'm into that. So where'd you go, her house? No, man, I took her to the fucking Vanderbilt suite at the Plaza Hotel. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You took her to the Plaza? Yeah, I got this beautiful suite and we, we drank champagne and looked out over the park and made love on the balcony. It was pretty intense. You should have gone to the Pierre. Why do you say that? Because the plaza is a dump. My old man says it used to be amazing, but it's totally run down and rancid now. And the Pierre is just a much, much better hotel. You got to stay at the Pierre, or the Carlton, or like the Carlisle. Well, I never stayed at any of them, but I definitely thought the plaza was pretty cool. So were you actually able to do anything with her? Or did you just like come immediately? I came pretty fast. Naturally. You only did it once? Well, I think she kind of freaked out a little bit afterwards. What do you mean? What'd she do? Well, she didn't freak out, but she definitely got pretty quiet. And I was like, what's the matter? We just had an amazing time together and I really like you. And she was like, but I don't even know you. So I was like, well, you know me now, but I don't really know if she agreed with that interpretation. 
crosses to the table and starts opening up the bag of cocaine to show Warren. Yeah, don't worry about that. A lot of times your average girl teen will bug out immediately following a swift and manly conquest. It's no big deal. You didn't do anything to her that she didn't do to you. Just call her up and, you know, take her to the zoo or something. Only don't sit here and start getting depressed after you finally got laid with a completely good-looking girl after a drought like the fucking Irish potato famine of 1848 because you're bringing me down. You should be totally proud of yourself and not get into your usual self-flagellating stew just because you came too fast and she freaked out afterwards. <laughs> now come here and take a look at the crystal formation on this rock. It's unbelievable. That's a big rock. A big rock. This baby alone would probably pay for your whole night at the plaza, you know? I doubt it. Why? How much did you spend? I haven't really tallied it up yet, but I guess it was about a thousand bills all told. You spent a thousand dollars on that girl when she was totally ready to fuck you for free? I wasn't so sure, man. She seemed kind of skittish. So what? Now you're in the hole for 2,500 bucks? 27. What is the matter with you? How did you spend that much money? I'm not really sure. Okay, you're out of control. You are like hell bent for destruction and I want nothing more to fucking do with it. I can't sell $2,700 worth of blow before tomorrow morning. Why not? Because it's totally impossible. I I'll make the calls, but I can't speed the natural pace of the market. It's just not going to happen. Besides, your share of the profits only comes to 1300 minus my service fee. And even if it didn't, I'm not letting you stay here all week with that money, Warren, because when your father finds out you spent that money on drugs, he's going to think I'm in cahoots with you, and then he's going to forgive you and kill me. No, he's not. Yes, he is. How could you spend another $1,000? It was surprisingly easy. All right, that's it. Get on the phone, call Christian, tell him we need distribution help. Tell him you'll give him whatever he wants out of your half. And if he can't help us move all 20 grams by tonight, you're coming over there to stay with him because I am officially closing the Dennis Ziegler home for runaway boys. Understand me? Who am I calling? Christian? Yes, Christian. All right. As Warren picks up the phone, Dennis roams around the room. Oh, you are so stupid, man. You are so stupid. If your father finds you here, man, he's going to sick that fucking driver on me, and I'm totally going to have to leave town. This is such a bad time for me. Did you have breakfast yet? No, I didn't have breakfast. I just got up. Let's take a run over to Zabar's and pick up a smoked salmon. Dial the phone! Hello, Mr. Berkman. Is Christian there? Oh, okay. Uh, could you please tell him that Warren Straub calls? I'm fine. How are you? Not much. How's Mrs. Berkman? Get off the phone. Anyway, uh, could you just tell him I called and he can call me at Dennis Zeigler's house? Uh, actually, just tell him I'll try him later. Thanks a lot. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Why don't you calm down? Oh, you are really asking for it. Maybe I can get a hold of Philip. The phone rings. They look at it fearfully. It keeps ringing. Dennis picks it up tentatively into the phone. Yeah? Because I didn't break your fucking sculpture, Warren Brogan! He slams the phone down as hard as he possibly can, runs his raging fingers through his hair. Warren starts to speak. Dennis grabs the phone and dials furiously, waits, into the phone. I just want you to think about what a sick, unhappy person you are that after all the serious problems we've been having for the last three months over your relentless identity crisis, which has nothing to fucking do with me, we're finally getting along together like we fucking love each other and you freak out at me this much and get me this angry at you because one of my friends accidentally broke your semi-lesbian... Ooh. I've lost my place. Has this ruined the flow of things, do you think? <laughs> because one of my friends accidentally broke your semi-lesbian progressive school clay sculpture. It was on the sh it was on the shelf so I could look at it. Will you listen to yourself? Will you listen to what you're saying? You torture me about a sculpture, you psychotic monster! And I can rip your fucking head off! slams the phone down and kicks it as hard as he can across the room. You have a nice touch, man. Shut up! <laughs> ah, 
I'm sick, sick. All right, Christian's not home and I ain't calling Philip. What about this shit? Could you sell any of this? He's rattled Warren's open suitcase full of toys. Um, yeah, I can sell all of it. Really, for how much? Could you get $2,000 for what's in here? I don't know, I never really tallied it up, but I'm fairly sure I can get a considerably more than that. Oh, we are selling this today. I'm calling Adam Salk's brother right now. He picks up the phone, stops. Is that okay? Go ahead. Dennis dials the phone. All right, maybe this will solve everything. Is that Donald? Dennis Ziegler, man, what's going on? Am I right? Listen, do you know Warren Straub? Yeah, so he's got like a lot of really high quality toys and shit from like the 50s and 60s and about 30 really rare first release albums. Covers the phone to Warren who's signaling him. What? <coughs> I think you should mention the toaster. Now he doesn't care about your toaster, Warren. One second, man. Yes, he does. It's really rare. It's worth money? Yeah. Sorry, man. Uh, he's also got this incredibly rare toaster from like 1847. 1955. From 1955. Like a completely rare edition of toaster. I'm not sure what the actual oh, model is. I said I'm not sure. I said I'm not sure what the actual model is, but I definitely know what it is. Well, then they recalled it. Like, oh, it. Stop! Yeah, man. Anyway, uh, he was gonna sell some of this shit to his regular boy, but I told him I had a friend who could probably come up with a much better price and I wanted to try to give you the business if you were interested. Uh, but the thing is, Donald, Donald, this stuff is like really good. So I don't wanna waste my time if you're not totally prepared to step up to the plate. You know what I mean there, Donald? Yeah, all right. You know, this afternoon's not so good for me, man. I'm uh, going to a ball game with my brother. No, man, Warren's like ready to go. Well, what are you doing right now? All right, give me your address. All right, man, see you in a few. I am a total business genius. I don't even know what this shit is worth and I'm already getting you like the best possible price for it. I am just like completely naturally gifted at business. Well, there is my usual guy who's definitely offered me decent money for the whole collection at various times. No, so. no, never mind your usual guy. You should totally let me handle this trans transaction for you, Warren, because this guy is like completely intimidated by me and I'm just going to get you much more money, all right? Whatever. All right. Now, before I go over there, tell me what would be the best possible money you could possibly get for this shit. I don't know. If, if you include the records, I guess... The best price you could hope to get would be like, uh, I don't know, like maybe 25 at the very outside. You're seriously telling me this junk is worth 2,500 bucks? Yeah, because it's a really good collection. But you probably won't get that. All right, now listen, Warren, I am not selling your baby toys if you don't tell me it's okay. Because I don't want you guilting it over my head for the rest of my life, okay? But if you don't want me to, I'm totally throwing you out of here right now because I have no desire to incur the wrath of Jason and you can't just walk in here and dump your situation on me and then obstruct every possible solution I come up with just because you're a destructive little freak who has to like wreck everything so you can get everybody whipped into a frenzy over you all the time. But I don't want you telling me later that I forced you into selling your precious belongings because it's totally up to you, all right? Oh, go ahead and sell them. I don't know what else to do. Then it starts getting dressed. All right. If this stuff is worth 25 bills, then I probably won't have to sell all of it. So tell me which of these I should try to hang on to and which I should immediately toss into that gaping maw of Donald Salk. I guess uh, save the Major Matt Masons for last. And if you can, I guess I'd prefer if you didn't sell the toaster. I just totally humiliated myself talking up this fucking toaster. Now you're telling me I can't sell it? Not if you don't have to, no. I, I don't know how much she's gonna offer. All right, I'll try. And, and give me the hat. We can't sell this? I don't think so. Why not? You could get money for this, couldn't you? I know I could, but I'm not selling it. All right. Dennis gives Warren the baseball cap and starts packing up the suitcase. The buzzer buzzes. It's Jason. It's not Jason. 
It's totally Jason. I'm going across the roof. It's not Jason. He doesn't even know I'm here. He knows who your friends are. You think he didn't figure out where you went? You only have two friends. Sociopathic. He's throwing a punch. You answer it. No way. Why not? This is not my house, man. So what? I don't want to answer it. What if it's him? All right, shut up. I wasn't talking. Stop! Dennis goes to the intercom and hits the talk button. Yeah. It's Jessica Goldman. Is Warren there? I'm gonna kill you, Warren. I didn't know she was coming here. It scared the shit out of me! Why? Just buzz her in. Dennis hits the buzzer and goes to the suitcase. All right. Sucks only on 81st, so I won't be long. I'll do my best and I'll try to save Major Matt Mason if I can, but he might be called upon to make the ultimate outer space sacrifice. I understand, man. Farewell, Toaster Amazing. Warren unhappily watches Dennis pack away the last of the collection and zip up the suitcase. All right. Cheer up, man. Your troubles are almost over. I'm cheerful. There's a knock on the door. Dennis is nearest the door and opens it. Jessica stands in the doorway. Hi, Dennis. How are you? I'm fine, Jessica. How are you? Fine. Are you from the leg embassy? Yeah, I'm the ambassador. Stay with it. Hey, I was just around the corner, so I thought I'd buzz up. Good morning to all good Norsemen. Excuse me. <laughs> How many Norsemen, Norse horsemen does it take to smoke a herring? Oh my God. Uh, all Norsemen smoke Morgan cigarettes. Am I supposed to know what you're talking about? I'm not talking about anything. It's just something to say. Uh, don't you want to kiss me good Morgan? He comes to her to kiss her. It doesn't go too well. She turns her face or ducks her head so he can't kiss her. Uh, yeah, can we please not? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. She moves away from him, then Dennis comes out of the bathroom. So, D, uh, how long do you think you're gonna be? There I am. I don't know. How much time do you need? Um, we're gonna get some food. How much time do we need? So, who's stopping you? I was actually wondering about the key. Well, how much time do we need for what? For whatever dastardly deed you're planning to indulge in, Jessica. I don't think we're going to be indulging in anything very dastardly, to tell you the truth, Dennis. I thought we were going to be indulging in some brunch. So that's your story, eh? <laughs> what are we talking about? Hey, man, you're my best friend. All right, kids, I'm out of here. Try to find some way to entertain yourselves. Don't leave on my account. Don't worry about it. Be back in a half. Where is he going? He just uh, has a business transaction to perform. What, is he like the big drug dealer or something? He's the big everything. Well, I'm sorry to burst in on you like this. That's okay. But I, I actually just wanted to tell you I can't have brunch. Why not? Well, when I got home this morning, I got into this really huge fight with my mom, and I think I'd better just be at home today. She kind of freaked out that I never called last night, so now she wants to have some big landmark discussion about how we're going to handle my living there this year. Well, thanks for canceling in person. Well, I'm sorry, but my mom's really upset, and getting along with her is a really big priority for me right now. I tried to call before, but the line was busy. Do you want to make a plan for another any time this week? I think I'd better just chill out a little bit this week, actually. All right. Well, you seem like you're really angry. I'm not. Well, that's not the impression you're conveying, but... No, I, I guess I just don't understand why you'd walk 10 blocks, blocks out of your way so you could be around the corner, so you could buzz up and tell me you can't have brunch with me. Uh, no, I told you I tried to call. Yeah, he was on the phone for like two minutes. All right, I'm sorry. Just nothing to be sorry about. All right. She goes slowly to the door and puts her hand on the knob. So, can I ask you something? Go ahead. Did you tell Dennis what happened last night? Um... 
I guess. Really? What did you say? Nothing. I just said we had a nice time. That's all? Pretty much. I find that really hard to believe. Why? I don't know. Don't you guys get into like comparing notes and stuff? I'm not really into that. Well, okay. It's just, it's getting a little weird now because when I talked to Valerie, she asked me if anything happened with us last night. And for some reason, I guess I didn't really tell her that anything did. So now she's going to talk to Dennis and I'm going to look like a total liar to someone I'm just starting to be close friends with and who I really care about. Um, so I don't really get, you're mad at me because you lied to Valerie? No, no, I just, I should have figured that you would like rush off to tell your friends that you fucked me. Whoa. Whereas I might be more inclined to be a little bit more discreet about it until I found out where I you know, stood with you. I didn't fucking rush off anywhere. Yeah, yeah whatever. You, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I came back here because I'm staying here. Yeah, okay, but you know, you know what? It really doesn't matter. <laughs> and the minute I walked through the door, he's like totally grilled me. Oh, so you just tell him anything he wants to know, no matter what the consequences are for somebody else? No. Will you let me finish my... Honestly, Warren, I, don't, I really don't care who you told or what you told them because people are going to think whatever they think. And you know what? There's nothing I can do about it. What people? What are you talking about? I don't know. But whatever it is, I must be wrong because of the way you're yelling. You're not anything. Well, I really, I should just really listen to my instincts, you know, because your instincts are never wrong. And it was totally against my instinct to come over here last night. And it was definitely against my instinct to sleep with you, but I did it and it's, it's too late. <laughs> and now my mom is totally furious at me. I probably ruined my friendship with Valerie and now like Dennis Ziegler thinks I'm like easy pickings or something. Nobody thinks anything. I don't even care what he thinks. Okay, because I don't actually know him or you or Valerie for that matter. So it doesn't really matter. I made new friends before. I can make new friends now if I have to. So let's just forget the whole thing ever happened. You can chalk one up in your book or whatever. I don't have a book. Yeah, and I'll just know better next time, hopefully, okay? I don't really get what you're so upset about. Well, I guess I'm just insane. I thought we had a really good time together and I was actually in a fairly up state of mind for once. I'm sure you were. Well, I didn't mean it in any kind of lascivious way, so I, I don't know why you want to take it like that. I really like you. Yeah, whatever. No, not whatever. I'm, I'm sorry I said anything to Dennis. I, I definitely caved in to the peer pressure, but I also definitely said as little as possible and was totally respectful of you in the, in the way I talked about you, even though I was pretty excited about what happened last night and also about like maybe like the prospects of like, I don't know, like going out with you, which I would be very into if you were. But if you want to think the whole thing me meant nothing to me, then go ahead, because that's not the case. Well, you know, I really... It's totally weird. Like, uh, I'm taking all your clothes off and having sex with somebody you barely know, then being like, what's up now? You know, like, it's such a intense experience, but then nobody knows what to fucking say, even though nothing really bad actually happened, you know? Well... I don't know. <laughs> but I really like you. I, I don't really agree with most of your opinions. Oh, thank you. But thank you. I don't meet a lot of people who I can actually make, who actually make me think, you know, and who can hold their own in an interesting discussion and who I'm totally hot for at the same time. You know, it's, it's a fairly effective combination. I don't know, Warren. Things are just really weird in my life right now, and everything you're saying is really sweet. But I have literally no idea whether you mean it or not. It's like my instinct is just broken, and I guess sometimes actions speak louder than words. Well, what action could I possibly take except to say that I'm sorry for whatever it is that you think I've done? Presents are always nice. Just kidding. You want a present? I'm just kidding. Why? I, I'm sitting on $12,000. I'll buy you a sports car, okay? That's okay. I don't even have a license yet. Well, what do you want? Are you serious? Name it. Okay. She looks around the room, her eyes light on the baseball cap. Uh, could I have that? Definitely. Really? It's yours. 
He picks up the baseball cap and holds it out to her. Here. Don't if you don't want to. I really want to. Why? <laughs> because I really like you. She reaches out slowly and takes the hat. Well, I don't know what to say. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe that you would give me something that means this much to you. I, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Good. She puts it on her head and self-consciously models it for him. What do you think? Looks great on you. You think? Definitely. She looks at him. He is clearly in distress and can't hide it. Well, you look totally miserable. I'm not. Taking off the hat. <sighs> well, I'm sorry, but I feel really weird taking your grandfather's hat. <laughs> then why are you going to ask me for it? I was totally kidding when I asked you for something. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. And then you insisted. I, I picked something, only why did you give it to me? I don't want it. If you don't want me to have it. Because I really want you to have it. Why do you keep saying that when you obviously don't? No. God damn. What do I have to do? Like, beg you to take it from me? Okay. Sorry. She puts the hat back on her head. Well, I mean, I, did I just go home? I don't know. Do whatever. Well, then I guess I will. She goes to the door. Should I assume you no longer want to go out this week? I don't think we can. I'm all out of baseball hats. She takes off the hat. Can I please say something? Can you try to give me that hat back one more time. I swear to God, I'll fucking burn it. Jessica puts the baseball cap down on the table. Well, that would be up to you. She turns and exits. Warren stands very still for a minute, then he gets up and carefully puts the hat with his stuff. He sits at the table and very carefully dumps all the cocaine on the dinner plate and looks at it. He spoons some mannitol onto the plate and starts mixing the two powders together, concentrating intensely. The phone rings. He reaches for it and knocks the entire plate of cocaine onto the floor. He doesn't know what to do for a minute. He laughs. The phone keeps ringing. He answers it. Hello? Well, Dad, I, I guess... Jake is up. Well, could I... No, I, I was planning on returning it. Thank you. Well, you're actually gonna have to wait like an hour. Do whatever you want, but I won't be here. Why don't you punch me in the face and throw me out of the apartment? That is definitely my intention. Uh-huh. I don't know, Dad, what kind of world do you think I'm living in? Yeah, I think about her all the time. I don't really know, Dad. I just see her in my imagination, I guess. Well, I feel strongly about the fact that I have a lot better judgment than she did at my age. It's also not too likely that I'm gonna move in with some 35 year old guy who beats me up all the time. So I don't think, really think it's an appropriate comparison. Although I will say that it's a total obvious one. By which I mean, I don't think it's all that clever. All right, I know you're brunching companions away. Well, it's really hard to find, fully appreciate what your girlfriend has to go through, but it's really fucking fortunate that she has both the good looks and the intelligence to see her through all the rough spots. Sounds good. Do whatever you want. I hate you too. His father hangs up. Warren hangs up too. He looks at the cocaine on the floor. He starts to scrape up what he can off the floor and onto the plate, but it's an impossible job. He suddenly stomps on the cocaine, smearing it all over the floor with wild kicks. After a moment of this, he stops. 
Dennis comes in very freaked out. He puts the suitcase down, now empty. What are you doing? What happened? I knocked the drugs on the floor. You did what? I was trying to mix in the cut. What? How bad is it? Pretty bad. Oh, God! Okay, all right, I can't even deal with this right now. Listen to me, Warren, something terrible has happened. What's the matter, somebody's dead? Yeah. Who, my mother? No, not your mother, you idiot! Okay. Stewie! Who? Stewie, Stewie, it's fucking Stewie! Stewie who? Stewie, the fat man, Stuart Grossbard. What's the matter with you? Oh shit, that's Stewie. Yeah, that's Stewie. How many fucking Stewies do you know? All right, I, I couldn't place a name for a second. What happened to him? I don't know, man. I guess he did too many speedballs. He was with that Dutch chick all night. They, they went to sleep, and when she woke up this morning, she couldn't wake him up, so she turned him over, and there was blood coming out of his nose and his eyes, and he was dead. Oh. I mean, I just saw the guy last night. I am so freaked out. I can't even believe it. How did you find out about it? Because when I got to Donald Salk's house, he was on the phone with Yaffe. So I got on the phone and Yaffe told me he went over to Stewie's this morning and there were all these cops there. And that girl was sitting there freaked out of her mind, crying and screaming and like smoking cigarettes and talking half in English and half in Dutch. And Yaffe told the cops he was Stewie's friend and they told him what happened. Stewie. Guess it's a good thing we didn't do any speedballs, you know? But did we buy bad shit or what? I don't think so. I was doing it all night and I didn't wake up with fucking blood coming out of my nose. Did you? No, but I didn't do any of it yet. And the girl was okay, so I guess he just overdid it. But I'm so freaked out. I, I mean, the guy's dead. Do you know what that means? It's like he's not going to be around anymore, like, at all. A and it just got me really fucking scared. I, I mean, we're such assholes to be doing all this shit, man. I am totally stopping. I know he was a big fat slob who totally overdid everything and all he ever ate was like sirloin drenched in butter and sour cream, but the guy was like 23 years old and now he's just gone. You know, like he is no more. Yeah. I don't know, man. I guess there's only a certain amount of time you can keep doing this shit before shit starts to happen to you. I, I mean, I'm really scared. So did you sell my stuff? Yeah. Did you have to sell everything? Oh, yeah. How much did you get for it? I only got 900. What do you mean? I mean, you had a totally inflated idea of what that shit was worth, so don't make me feel bad about it. I know exactly what it's worth, and that guy just rooked you. I am really gonna fucking hit you, man. I totally got you the best possible deal I could. Then you shouldn't have sold it. You told me to sell it! At least I didn't knock the fucking coke on the floor, so don't make me feel bad about this, man, all right? I freaked out of my mind, so maybe I didn't do so well. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's better than nothing. I guessed. <laughs> what happened to that girl? She left. You already had a fight with her? I'm not really sure what happened. How could you mess that up so fast? What kind of talent for misery do you have, man? I don't know. I guess I'm pretty advanced. Did my girlfriend call back? No. I think I went too far with her before. But I can't even deal with it right now. I am too freaked out. Dennis lies down on his back. I just can't believe this, man. It's like so completely bizarre. And it's not like I even liked the guy that much, you know? I just knew him, you know? But if we had been doing those speedballs last night, we could both be dead now. Do you understand how close that is? I mean... It's death, death. It's so incredibly heavy. It's like so much heavier than like 95% of the shit you deal with in the average day that constitutes your supposed life. And it's like so totally off to the side. It's like completely ridiculous. I mean, that was it. That, that was his life period. The life of Stuart, a fat Jew from Long Island with a grotesque accent who sold drugs and ate steak and did nothing of note, like, whatsoever. I don't know, man. I'm, like, high on fear. I feel totally high on fear. I'm, like, I don't even know what to do with myself. I, I want to, like, go to a cooking school in Florence or, like, go into show business. I could so totally be a completely great chef. It's, like, ridiculous. 
or like an actor, like a director, I, I should totally direct movies, man. I'd be a genius at it. Like if you take the average person with the average sensibility or sense of humor or the way they look at the world and what thoughts they have or what they think and you compare it to the way I look at shit and the shit I come up with to say or, or just the slant I put on shit. There's just like no comparison at all. I could totally make movies, man. I would be like one of the greatest movie makers of all time. Plus, I'm, I'm like so much better at sports than everyone I know, except Wally and those big black basketball players, man. But, but I totally played with those guys and completely earned their respect. And Wally was like, Denny, man, you are the only white friend I have who I can take uptown and hang out with my friends and not be embarrassed. Because I just go up there and hang out with them and like get them so much more stoned than they've ever been in all their life. And like, I'm completely not intimidated by them at all, you know? Yeah. I on fear, man. I, I am completely stoned out of my mind on fear. And like you guys think I'm like totally confident and on top of it, but it's not true at all. My fucking mother is so fucking harsh and wildly extreme that I just got trained to snap back twice as hard the minute anybody starts to fuck with me. That's how I fight with Valerie. Like the minute we get into an argument, whatever she says to me, I just double it and totally get in her face until she backs down or like has to like leave the room. It completely works too, because I don't have to take any of the shit I see all my male friends taking from their fucking girlfriends or like the, the shit my father takes from my mother. I mean, all he does is fucking lord it over everybody, man, over all my brothers and sisters and like all his fucking assistants and his dealers and agents and like all these fucking celebrities who buy his art because he totally knows that he's like a complete living genius. And so he's like, why should I spend two minutes talking to anybody? I don't want to, except now he's like, torturing everyone constantly because he basically never doesn't have to pee and my mother's freaking out because she's working 14 hours a day because they cut the money out of all her programs and she's totally predicting major inner city catastrophe in years to come she completely has his balls in a vice she's like eddie you're an asshole eddie nobody gives a shit if you have to pee you always have to pee so shut up she just tramples him man she, she's like no matter what you do it doesn't matter because all you do is sell a bunch of paintings to like 1% of the population. And I'm out there every day, like saving children's lives and trying to help real people who are being destroyed by Ronald Reagan. So whatever you do and however famous you are, it's just a total tissue of conceit because it's got nothing to do with anybody but rich people. She just makes total emasculated mincemeat out of him. And the only thing he can do to fight back is go fuck some 20 year old groupie only now he can't do that anymore because he's so sick so he's just totally in her power and all he can do is torture her from like a totally weaker position and she's like laughing in his face my family is sick man they're sick you think your fucking father's crazy what if like everywhere he went total strangers like worshipped him as a god wait till his health starts to go okay can you imagine what that's like like seriously, what does that feel like to, to be looking ahead like five years and not knowing whether you're still going to be here? You, you can totally see why people are religious, man. I mean, how much better would it be to think you're going to be somewhere, you know, instead of absolutely nowhere, like gone forever. That is so fucking scary. I am so fucking scared right now. I got to call my girlfriend. You have totally fucked me up, by the way. How emblematic of your personality is it that you walk into a room for 10 minutes and break the exact item calculated to reap the maximum possible amount of havoc, no matter where you are. You're a total troublemaker, Warren. I should totally ban you from my house. So keyed up, I can't shut up. I wish Valerie was here. Maybe I should call that girl Natalie and see if she'll come over and give me a blow job. She really likes me, man. She told my sister I had beautiful eyes. I do have totally amazing eyes. They're a completely amazing, unique shape. Like most people with my kind of eyes aren't shaped like this at all. My eyes are like totally intense and direct. Like if I look people in the eye, like nine out of 10 people can't even hold my gaze. Did you do any of that Coke? Not yet. I didn't even want to look at it, man. I'm so freaked out. I, I totally feel like donating it to charity or something. <laughs> that, 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 that's so not funny. I wonder if anybody told his family. I'm sure they did. I wonder if they'll have a funeral. I'm sure they will. It's going to be one big casket. 
I wonder if anybody will show up. Why wouldn't they? Because nobody liked the guy. I called like six people and I was so freaked out and nobody cared at all. They were all like, wow, that's amazing. Is the coke all right? Now, I don't know if that means they're all like totally callous and unfeeling or whether the guy was just a totally reprehensible human being. Well, he didn't really leave me with any lasting warm impressions. I mean, I'm sorry he's dead, but I read the newspaper this morning too, you know. Well, all I know is if I had a fucking funeral, there wouldn't be room to sit. Someday I'm gonna make a movie about all of us, man. Like if you made that guy Donald Salk a character in a movie with all that shit in his apartment, how heavy would that be? And most people would find, they'd find some bad actor to like do some caricature sitcom imitation of this guy and like totally miss all the intense subtleties and qualities of his personality. And if it was me, I would just go in there and use the real guy and it would be so much heavier and so much funnier. Don't you think? I don't know. But don't you think I would be like an amazing director? I have no idea, man. What do you mean you have no idea? I mean, I have no idea. Well, I totally would be. I would totally. But you've never done it. What do you mean? I mean, you've never done it. You don't know anything about it. You just like movies and have an interest in people's personalities. No, I don't just like movies. I totally do. I like them too, but I don't necessarily think you'd be a good movie director because I have no idea if you have the slightest talent for it whatsoever. I'm sorry. You're really pissing me off. I don't really give a shit, man. Why did you sell my fucking toy collection for $900? Is that what you're mad about? With poor Stewie moldering in the ground? I don't give a fuck about Stewie, and neither do you. I didn't even know him. So call the guy up and get it back and dig your own fucking grave, you little asshole! I'm totally sick of you and your moronic fucking self-imposed dilemma! I've been dealing with drugs for five years and I never once dropped any of it on the fucking floor! Because I'm not an imbecile! I cannot believe that you do that and then you have the nerve to give me shit because I undersold your little toy box? Why do you have to talk to me that way, man? What do I talk to you what way? Why do you have to call me an asshole like every five seconds? I don't like it. What do you mean? We, we call each other shit all the time. Don't start with me, Warren, because all I've been doing for the last two days is like totally try to help you. I know you're doing something, man, but I can barely tell if you're even on my side. What are you talking about? I'm on your side, I'm totally on your side. Then why are you always like reminding me that I haven't done well with girls for a really long time, man? Because? And like constantly insulting me and like teasing me like and like telling me how incompetent I am and what a fuck up I am, like this running motif like every time we hang out. Because you are a fuck up. So am I, so is everyone we know. What is the big deal? And how come every time I said I liked a girl, you immediately said she's got a fat ass or like she's no tits or she's got a horse face or whatever, you know? Jessica Goldman is the first girl I ever had a chance with who like clearly good looking enough that you weren't able to make me feel like a second rate asshole for wanting to go out with her. You're really making me mad. That's what you're mad about, baby, because that time I said that girl Susan had a horse face, that's just the way I talk, man. We all talk that way. It doesn't mean anything. You can't like suddenly turn around and act all fucking hurt and sensitive about that shit. That's the way we are with each other. Besides that girl, Susan did have a horse face and everybody else could see it. I'm just the only one who says it. And when you're with a really good looking girl, I fucking say that. So give me this shit from the back benches the fucking peanut gallery because it's total bullshit and I'm already so sick of you after hanging out with you for less than 24 hours in a row that I'm like two seconds away from beating the fucking shit out of you, you little fucking asshole. What do you mean I'm not on your side? I'm sure you love me, man. You're totally like my personal hero, but I don't really get the fucking feeling that you are. A moment. Dennis gets up. His face twists with a strange shape and then he breaks out with a surprising choking sob. He starts crying. This goes on for a moment. Warren watches him coldly. What are you crying about? What do you think I'm crying about? I assume you feel bad about something you think has happened to you. 
No. It's because you said I was your hero. Oh. Dennis goes to the kitchenette and blows his nose with a paper towel. So what do you say? You want to like stop being friends with me? I don't know, man. I'm not like breaking up with you. I'm not your girlfriend. So what are you saying? I don't know. Well, I, I can't really. Let's just drop it. All right. Can I have that money? Dennis gives Warren the $900. Well, I'm only 1800 short. Well, I'll start moving what's left of this shit today and see how much we can scrape up. Doesn't matter. You want to smoke pot? All right. Dennis goes to his table and takes out a small plastic bag of pot. Where'd you get that? We got it from Stewie last night. Christian sold him some. I'd still like to find out where Christian got it. Fucking pisses me off that those ragamuffins are like running around copping drugs that I don't know about. I was gonna get some of that heroin from Stewie till it killed him. I, I just hope it's understood in the community that this Coke is like really good and that Stewie just overdid it. I'm sure it is. Dennis starts rolling a joint. It's sort of amazing that one of us actually died, you know? It's like, my dad's always saying, do you know how bad you guys would have to fuck up before anything really serious ever happened to you? You and all your friends from the Upper West Side who went to that fucking school where they think it's going to cripple you for life if they teach you how to spell? Do you know what happens to the other kids who do the kind of shit you guys do? They die, man. They go to prison or they shoot each other and the only difference between you and them is my money. It's like a big fucking safety net, but you can't stretch it too far, man, because your sister fell right through it. But the fact is, he's just so freaked out of his mind that he did so well, and it all blew up in his face anyway. Like he did this great enterprising thing for himself and his family and made a fortune in this incredibly tough racket and got a house on the park without any help from anyone. And he never felt bad for anyone who couldn't do the same. But when he was at the height of his powers, he totally lost control of his own daughter. She ended up getting beaten to death by some guy from the world next door to us. There's nothing he could do about it. So for the last nine years, he's been trying to literally pound his life back into shape. That's not really going too well because he's totally by himself. You know? Yes. Can't believe you don't think I'm on your side. Pause. Warren looks at him as if from a very great distance. All right, all right, you're on my side. Lighting up. So, what are you gonna do? I don't know, man. Guess I'll just go home. Dennis smokes pot. Warren sits there. The lights fade out. 